Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. We here at Hold the Hope would love to wish each and every dad out there a very happy and safe Father's Day. Okay, how long you think it'll take? Have a seat and we'll get to you as soon as we can. Thanks. Excuse me. Sorry. Hi, Daddy. Hey, sweetie. Do you have Mom's iPad again? She said I could. Oh, she did, did she? Shh. She's in the bathroom. Very soon. Daddy has a flat tire. Aren't tires supposed to be fat? No, silly. Not not fat. Flat. Daddy has Look a... Look at my drawing. I drew all the animals from Noah's Ark, Daddy, but I pretended like it was our family going on the ark. Daddy, me, Mommy, and Madison. Can you see it, Daddy? Yes, yes, you did a very good job. Hey, sweetie, why is Daddy on a boat with a referee? That's a zebra, Daddy. Oh, yes, now I see. And you're standing on the top of the boat because you're praying to God to keep us safe, like you do at home. Hey, Daddy, when you get home, you and I are going to play tea, and I'm going to be the princess. Yes, you are. Hey, what's Daddy going to be? You're going to be the hero, Daddy. You're always my hero. Well... <gasps> I've got to go. Love you, Daddy. Bye. I love you, too. Happy Father's Day, dads. God bless you richly. Today's message is entitled, Dad, You Matter. We live in a day and an age when dads don't really matter anymore. They're relegated down to mumbling, bumbling, needless boobs who make more of a mess than a difference. But dads, I'm here to tell you that you matter. You are needed. You make a difference, a big, big difference. And your absence in our lives is costing us and costing society more than we realize. So thank you for being an involved dad. We appreciate you. Your family appreciate you. Jesus appreciates you because dad, you matter. Turn with me, please, to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. First, Paul says, children, obey your parents. Why? Because God said it is the right thing to do. Not only is it, is it the right thing to do, but it is the first commandment with a promise. The promise of a long life and that all may go well with you. The obedient children. Now, I wonder... Could it possibly be the reason why so many of our young boys and young girls, but especially our young boys, join violent gangs and commit violent crimes and either end up doing time, if not life in prison, or their days are cut short by gang violence or by some other means? Could it be that our young children 
are actually being taught to disrespect authority, which in turn breeds violence and contempt, which gives birth to violence and death, an early death. The next thing Paul advises the fathers is, do not anger your children, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. It is the father's job, it is our job, fathers, to bring up our children properly and to discipline them whenever they may need it. Also, it is our job, dads, is the father's job to instruct his children in the things of God. The burden does not rest on the shoulders of moms, but it rests squarely on our shoulders, dads, and is definitely does not rest with the school boards. Today's school boards and liberal teachers believe that it is their job to indoctrinate our children with their liberal thoughts and liberal agenda. They push their world of view on our children and we stand silently by and let them do it. These liberals never think about God, nor do they have the things of God in mind. The things that liberal teachers force their students our children to participate in is criminal and has long past crossed the line of child abuse, child sexual abuse. Some of them could have charges or should have charges brought against them and put in prison. It has gotten so bad that even gay men are now standing up and saying enough is enough. We will not allow a flag to dictate nor define who we are or what we think. Dad, you matter and your children matter. Look at what Nehemiah instructed the Israelites who returned to Jerusalem from exile to do. Here's what he said, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your homes. So I'm encouraging you today, dads, fight for your sons, fight for your daughters, fight for your wives, fight for your homes, fight dads for your family. This is your family we're talking about here. So take an interest and fight for them. They're coming after everything that you have. They have already declared, you will have nothing and you will be happy. In other words, they don't care whether you're happy or not, but you will have nothing. That is their agenda, and they will take out anybody, including us dads, who will dare stand in their way, even if they have to lie, cheat, and manipulate to do it. They will take out anybody who stands in their way. And shame on any Christian who helps them achieve their evil agenda. You had better check your Christianity before you appear before God's judgment throne. Dads, you matter more than they care to admit, more than we realize. And that is why they're trying to get you out of the way. That's why they're trying to get us, dads, out of the way. Because you matter. We matter, dads. They can and will have full access of our families if you don't stand up, if we don't stand up. And you know what? They are actually succeeding at taking some of us, the majority of us, out of the way. According to U.S. Census Bureau, 18.4 million children, that is one 
in four children. One child in four lived without a biological step or adoptive father in the home. In other words, there is no father figure in the home at all. And the results? Well, here's what the media is not telling us. When a child is raised in a fatherless home, there are four times greater risk of poverty. More likely to have behavioral problems. Two times greater risk of infant mortality. More likely to go to prison. More likely to commit crime. Seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen. More likely to face abuse and neglect. More likely to abuse drugs and alcohol. Two times more likely to suffer obesity. Two times more likely to drop out of school. Now, does that sound like you don't matter, dads? Of course you matter, and you matter greatly. It is God's original plan for every child to live and thrive in a two-parent home, one father and one mother for life. These are not positive things that are happening in the lives of our children without you, Dad. Your children need you. Your family needs you. We have changed and rearranged our values so much that we don't even recognize what is right or what is wrong anymore. We have redefined and amended our definitions of what a father is until we've lost sight of who we are as men and as dads. These are our children, not the school board's children. They are our responsibility, not the state's. We need to step up and do what is right for our children. These are our children. We have fathered them. We must take care of them. We must defend them. We must teach them what is right and what is wrong. And I want to say thank you, dads, who have stepped up and taken responsibility of raising your children. Thank you, dads, who have stepped up and taken the responsibility of raising someone else's children. Thank you, dads, who have stepped up and been a role model for children in your church or in your school or in your neighborhood or in your big brother organization. Thank you. We appreciate you. May the Lord bless you for what you're doing. When I was young and first got saved, there was a young boy in our church who took a liking to me, but I never mentored him. I would see him at church every Sunday, and he would come and he would sit with me, and sometimes he wanted me to come and eat with them, and we would go. But I never realized how important a father was to a young boy who did not have a father in the home. I took the whole fatherhood thing for granted because I had a father in the home. My wife had a family. I had a father in the home. My children had a father in the home. I did not realize the importance of a father and the devastation of the lack thereof. I was so busy being a father to my own daughter, I only had one at that time, one daughter at that time, and never realized the opportunity that God had given me to make a difference in a young boy's life. That young boy grew up to be a man and he fell into bad company. He went to prison and I could have made a difference in his life, but I dropped the ball. And it still haunts me today, every time I think about it, now that I realize that I dropped the ball on that young boy who was crying out for a father figure. I wish I could go back 
and make a difference in his life, but it's too late for him. But it might not be too late for your son. It might not be too late for your, your daughter, dad. So step up and make a difference in your children's life. Pick up the phone and call that wayward child today. Let them know that you love them and you care about them and that you are there for them. According to the National Fatherhood Initiative, www.fatherhood.org, children with involved fathers have a strong foundation for child well-being, meaning that with the presence of a father in the home, children have better opportunities, better outcomes in life, and are at a lower risk for a host of poor childhood outcomes. Dads, when you're at home and active in your children's lives, your children have a lower infant mortality rate, they suffer less emotional and behavioral problems. They suffer less and neglect and abuse, suffer less neglect and abuse, less likely for personal injury, less likely for obesity, less likely to have poor school performance, less likely for teen pregnancy, less like, likely to be incarcerated as juveniles, less likely to abuse alcohol or some other substance, less likely for criminal activity, and the suicide rate drops way, way down when you are present and active in your children's lives, Dad. So according to the statistics that I found on fatherhood.org, not only do your children benefit from your involvement, but your wife, the mother of your children, will benefit largely from your involvement. Now, dads, does that sound like you don't matter? Get involved with your children's lives and kill two birds with one stone, as they say. Improve the overall emotional and social well-being of your children, as well as that of your spouse. So think about that. It's a win-win situation. Get involved in your children's lives and you cannot lose. But not only does your involvement, dads, improve the emotional and social well-being of your child, but it will improve your child's spiritual well-being as well. According to the statistics I found on Rick Dyke's Dad's Church um, website, dads are very influential in the salvation of their children. When a dad comes to Christ first, 93% of families will follow as opposed to only 17% when a, when a mother is first. And only 3.5% when the child comes to Christ first. Dad, did you know that statistics show that Father's Day claims the lowest average church attendance of all the Sundays? According to Life Research Group, Father's Day is beaten out by Labor Day, Memorial Day, and even the 4th of July weekend. The question is, I mean, why? Why is this? Since Mother's Day has been historically the third highest attended Sunday of all the year, only fallen behind Easter and Christmas. Maybe it's because dads are not in church. Maybe they're out fishing or at home watching the ball game or doing some other chore, but not in church. Or could it be that the fathers are not even in the homes in the first place? Because 92% of incarcerated parents are fathers. That is a shocking and staggering statistic. 92% of parents who are in prison are fathers. And they probably came from fatherless homes 
themselves. According to the Citizen.com, Promise Keepers and Baptist Press collected data showing that if a father does not go to church, even if his wife does go to church, only one child in 50 will become a regular worshiper. But on the other hand, if a father does go to church regularly, if he does worship regularly, regardless of what the mother does, it's between two-thirds and three-quarters of his children will attend services as adults. What that is saying is that if you have three children, two of those will be regular worshipers. If you have four children, three of those will be regular worshipers, dads. If you will be a regular worshiper, you matter. Your children matter. So get involved. You matter in the child, your child's emotional and social well-being. You matter in your child's spiritual well-being. You matter, dads. You matter a great deal. I want to share a story that I read online. This is a story that Pastor George W. Truett told about a 16-year-old boy who came to the first three nights of his revival services. At the end of each service, when Truett asked those who wanted prayer to raise their hands, this young teenager would lift his hand, requesting prayer. The fourth night, however, the boy showed up and he showed little interest when Truett asked for, to, to raise hands for those who wanted prayer. Truett spoke to the teen after the services had ended and asked them, why have you lost interest? The boy answered, My dad is a doctor and is the cleverest, smartest, strongest, strongest man in the world. But he never goes to church. I've decided that if my dad doesn't need Jesus, then I don't either. The next day, Truett went to the doctor's office and told him what his son said. The doctor asked Truett where the next services was. Tonight, Truett replied. The doctor was present that night, and during the decision, when the altar call was made, he came forward and gave his life to Jesus. He took Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The dad then turned around and saw his son standing behind him, also making the decision to make Jesus Lord and Savior of his life. The boy then embraced his father and said, Dad, I am so glad you came. I wanted to come to Jesus, but I was waiting for you. Are you the stumbling block for your child, Dad? Are you the guiding light? Are you showing them the way to righteousness the way to holiness, or are you blocking their way? Your children are looking to you, dads, for guidance, for leadership, for direction. Do not let them down. They're waiting for you. Research shows that a father's absence affects his children in numerous negative and unfortunate ways. While a father's presence makes a positive difference in the lives of both children and mothers. These aren't just statistics. They're reality. They are your children reality. Some children will never hear the name of Jesus because dads are too busy or too cool or too macho or, 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 or too important to go to church or to take their families to church. Other children will never hear because fathers are not at home, nor are they active in the lives of their children. And who pays the price? Your children, your family, society will pay the price. We all suffer 
when you are absent, Dad, when you're not active in your home. We all pay the price. Let me end with this question. Eternity is a very long time. Are you preparing your children for eternity? Dads, have you taught your children about Jesus? Have you spoken to them about the eternity and their souls? Do they have a godly example in you, Dad? Are they following a godly example? Or are they following an ungodly example? Are they following the examples of a gangster and gang members and violent men or musicians or entertainers? Every child needs a hero, but that hero, be that hero for your child, Dad. Be the kind of dad that makes your child want to serve the Lord. Be the kind of dad that leaves a shining example for your children to follow. But it all starts with knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Dad? Would you like to know him today? Is there anybody out there who do not know Jesus? Jesus is coming back really, really soon. Is there anyone who do not know him, who is not ready for his return? If you would like to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to take my place in, in my family, to protect my family. Help me to live for you, Jesus, and to be an example in my home. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do is to get a Bible, begin to read that Bible so that you can learn what is right and what is wrong, what Jesus expects what you will have to answer for in that great day of judgment. And so that you can train up your children in the way that they should go. Find yourself a Bible-believing church, not a wayward church, not, not one of those progressive churches, but finding Bible-believing churches who believe in holiness and righteousness. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. When Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now enter into the joy of the Lord. If you have said that prayer, write us, let us know, send us a note so that we can rejoice with you. Now, I want to say thank you and happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. The Lord bless you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.